It is always like that when entering a club. The sense of importance mixed with the feeling that you are at the mercy of snipers, of those who are already there, newcomers versus indigenous. Across the empty dance floor, she swings her angles, this angular beastie, her rapturous angles, femininely carrying her male connotations, and then sticks her bare back on the sweaty walls, written and rewritten and written again. Long live the bride, the bride, the bride. The bride goes to your school, the bride is pregnant. Death to faggots, crossed out faggots, added violence. Death to violence, crossed out violence, added Muslims, gypsies, Catholics, sluts. Death to Muslims, gypsies, Catholics, sluts. Crossed out Muslims, gypsies, Catholics, sluts, added everybody. Death to everybody, equality. Sketch of mental processes of collective correctness. Maturation, masturbation, maturation, masturbation, maturation through masturbation. Fight the bully. We are all the bully when we can be. Then it is not your fault. Of course not. Sometimes life is calm and happy. Happy. That leopard coat and plastic sunglasses. Anyway, weddings are just something for the girls. I dance, I break the air, I break habits of my arms, I break habits of my legs, I break the stiffness, I break the space between me and her, I break myself, I break horses, I dance, I want to leave. Eyes are everywhere keen interest or a sneer, heaven and hell of practicing mating customs of nightbirds, the ones who were already giving head at the ones who will be giving head soon, the beauty without strength and peace, poros, letting in auras and wills of others of the kind they pity while ravenously chewing on it. The feeling of guilt, sewed tightly in the schoolgirl's skirt lining, still learning her mother tongue. Long, gentle licking, in aspic, in thin slices, forgotten in the fridge, stains, in greasy eyes, polished hard in boys' toilets, hard-winged beetles, shiny buttons on the musty, wrinkled blouse for school. Don't worry, that is made for it anyway. She was admiring her on her natural ability to dance. She never knew what to do with her arms. Not even while she was walking, she was always aware of disharmony of her steps and her arms. Always aware always aware of each limb separately and of every little stiff move, always, always aware, just to be free. She left her to squeeze next to a guy on the dance floor and went outside. Even now, very drunk, she was aware of each step. You're walking like a winding duck. The landscape was going up and down like a yo-yo. It wasn't better, not even with her eyes closed. The same image, the same trembling, throwing up in a corner. The silver moon on a spring, up, down, up and down, under the night crooked shadows of the estate buildings. The tram station under the colonnade of trees, oily night sky hanging heavily onto the naked tree claws, the avenue rolling uncompromisingly into the event horizon. What happens to particles in the past is only decided when they are observed in the future. Until such time, reality is just an abstraction, 
the dry prairie sanding the bones, the salty open sea, she was a thirsty child. And in the distance, the faraway ghost light of a tram that will take you to the safety. The trucks are sounding just like ships. That is, always when a horn beeps, she imagines an ocean cruiser. She doesn't think much about it. She doesn't ask questions. Just simply as that. Just few blocks away here in this deep continent, a ship is passing by. Instead of leaves on the branches of the trees, black birds are growing, taking off and landing, flying, pushing, squeaking, alive black treetops, falling apart and gathering again, shaping and reshaping, breathing in and breathing out, down to the pavement, feathers and baby chicks. Her focus from the shape-shifting treetops was soon moved towards somebody's intense presence. Few meters down, a man was standing, a stiff watcher. She knew him. He was waiting the tram very often at the same stop, at the same time as she did. She pretended she didn't see him. If I don't see you, you don't exist. They got on the same tram. They got off at the same stop. She speeded up and could feel the waves of his huge stomach. She could feel his catching up with her. He grabbed her arm and turned her towards him. His breath of onions and barbecue. I see you were celebrating tonight. Lots of drinking, boys and stuff. Come with me, we will have good times. I have whiskey. Don't pretend now. I saw how you were watching me in the tram every night. You are watching me and I am watching you. I know you are young and shy, but you will get over it. Come on, come on. Tight hugs, humid hairy hands, imprisoned with his body. She struggled. He was stronger, scratching her with his beard all over her neck and face. Her elbows were falling into his jelly-like belly, but she was faster and managed to use a moment of his incautiousness to wriggle out from his squeeze and to kick him in his balls. Surprised, he let his arms hang lifelessly, meaninglessly, next to his big torso. And she started to run. She was running like she had never run before, while he was crying behind her back in almost unhuman voice, like one of those croaking birds, like a man, like a woman, like a tubby, like a baby, like the loneliest creature in the universe. She was losing her breath from running fast and feeling slightly sorry for this materialized loneliness and its weeping. Come back. Come back. I love you. I love you. Nobody will love you like I do. Come back, my love. Come back. She was running fast. It was already dawn.